Welcome back for another rousing tutorial of creating our own operating system. We're still learning about bootloaders and the wonders that are all things bootloaders. We're having a great time. Last video I gave you some challenges to try out. This time we're going to start out by going over the challenges and that should be it for this video. Fairly straightforward, fairly quick. So I'm here in the challenges folder. First let's look at challenge 1-1, ASM. I'll run it first. It doesn't look like it does anything, but if you start typing, you'll see that it reads the character and then prints it back out to the screen. Big whoop, but it's better than doing nothing. How does this work? Let's see the code. So we start off our bootloader with the bit 16, org 7, c00, same as always. All we do is call the read character function, which is just ah equals 0, .0 int 16, int 0x16. Then we call print character 0x0e. And the output of the read character function actually already is stored in AL. So really we don't have to do anything. We can just call int 0x10 and it will print the character that we just read. Then we jump to start no matter what and it's just going to loop forever. And we saw what that does. So that's pretty cool. Let's move on to challenge two. I'll launch it. We have the same thing going on here with the added feature that if you hit enter, booting from hard disk, it just rebooted the entire system using the reboot call to the BIOS. So hit enter. Reboot, reboot, reboot. Cool. So we used a conditional. We're easing our way in. How did we do it? If we look at the source, standard bootloader, you call the read character just like before, call print character, and then before we loop, we're going to check for the enter character. So we compare AL, which already has the result, to 0xd, which is the ASCII for carriage return. I had to go to ASCIItable.com or whatever ASCII reference you want to use to find that out. When you're hitting enter, it's actually just sending the carriage return key. ASCII 0xd. We make that comparison. If it's not equal, then we're just going to loop again. So it just skips the line with the interrupt. If it is equal to 0xd, it's not going to jump to next. It's going to call int 0x19, which just reboots, and then we get started over again. Otherwise, it's going to jump back to the start, just like the previous program. So for challenge two, it does absolutely nothing but clear the screen. Amazing! If you check out the source, that is because we switched mode. In this case, we switched to text mode. We were already in text mode by default, so really the only effect of this is to clear the screen. Nothing too fancy. For challenge 2-2, we miraculously cleared the screen again and right high, right in the middle of the screen. How did we do it? So we switch mode just like the last one. We clear the screen and then we use the enable cursor command that we talked about in the last lesson to allow us to move the cursor around and then finally, we make the BIOS call that actually moves the cursor to column 39, row 12. And since we're in 80 by 25 text mode, that's the exact middle for the two character word high. So we put 0x2 in AH, 0x0 in BH, and then DH is our row. We'll put 12 in there. DL is our column. We put 39. We call int 0x10. The cursor moves to the place that we need to. So now we can actually print our screen. That's really simple. We just print the H character and then print the I character, which we've done plenty of times before. So you should be starting to see that it can be pretty easy to make some basic functionality with stringing BIOS calls together, at least in 16-bit real mode when we have them available to us. The third challenge is pretty cool when you see it happen. As you can see, we open up the emulator and it immediately or maybe a little less than immediately, depending on how fast it's running, fills the entire screen with red. So this is when we use VGA mode. If we open up the source, you'll see that instead of switching to text mode, we will switch to VGA mode, and this allows us to write actual graphics pixels to the screen. What we do is, the X value is gonna be stored in CX, so we're gonna set that to zero. We'll set up our registers to call the graphics pixel write command, so, 0C in the AH register, 0X4 in AL to indicate the red color that we saw, BH0X0, page number, not really sure what that does, but 0 works for me, so feel free to play around with it, and DX is the row. So you'll notice that all we're doing is incrementing CX, the column. It automatically wraps around, which is very convenient, so we don't have to worry about dividing things out and making sure that we increment both DX and CX at the right times, a massive CX gets divided evenly, and we see that the entire screen ends up getting covered. So yeah, we set up the graphics pixel write command, and then we call int 0x10, and then we increment CX. So we just add one to the pixel, draw the next one in line, and then we do it all again. So 
Once we set everything up, we're really just calling the interrupt, increment CX, and jumping. Call it increment jump again, over and over and over, forever. For challenge 3-2, things move a lot slower, so you can really see that it's animated and that we're going one pixel at a time. That line moves a lot slower, and it's exactly the same program, except before redrawing, we insert a call to the BIOS wait function. We wait for 1 30th of a second. So as we can see, the code looks mostly the same. Instead of directly setting CX, we push zero into the stack. We have to do this because we might be modifying that CX register by calling the BIOS wait function. Keeping it on the stack keeps it safe from being modified, whereas in a register, something else could accidentally change it. So when we call write graphics pixel, we actually pop the value into CX. Then we make our call. Then we increment CX and push the value from CX back onto the stack. Then we can call the wait function 0x86. And then I showed in the last video how I calculated 1 30th of a second wait time, 0x7530, int 15, and then we do it again. We're gonna pop the, pop the column value, increment it, push it, wait. So that's all there is to it. And I think that's all the challenges. So hopefully that helped you out. Next, we can move on to talking about functions.